All right, guys, so we're going to be doing another coverage of the Dragon Ball GT A Heroes Legacy event. Uh, in this episode, we are going to be covering how many runs it's going to take to go after to max out your uh, Goku Jr. Uh, at least my estimate on it. It's not the best estimate, but it is an estimate um, about whether you should do crits or double attacks or dodge. Um, and we're going to talk about a couple other things, so let's go ahead and talk about it. As discussed before, the amount of orbs required to get Goku Jr. up to max potential system is 6,540 small, 3,530 medium, and 346 large. By the way, shout out to the Reddit. Um, in order to, distrib to distribute them, top left is 1,465 small, 675 medium, 65 large, bottom left is 1,315 small. 670 medium and 67 large bottom right is 2455 small 1530 medium and 152 large and top right is 1305 small 655 medium and 62 large so overall that's just what it requires to get uh, maxed out and we have the event over here now if you guys didn't already see it Go ahead and check out my other video. I did a full in-depth breakdown of the card, his Doken Awaken version, the event, um, and some team building. So go ahead, check that out. You should see a card popping up that, um, that that will point you to that video as well if you haven't checked it out already. I go over everything. So essentially, we have um, level 5 is where we're going to be grinding out the orbs. Now, a maxed out Goku Jr., as I also mentioned in yesterday's video, uh, has an average damage output of 596,000. 493 damage now that doesn't take into consideration the attacks um going up against the opponent or the crits or anything he actually can hit for like 1.8 million um best case scenario you know when he's going up against a villain technique card with a crit proc um and he's probably having some link skills hit off on a double gogeta team or something like that so yes and obviously he is not meant to hit in the millions that's not his average but he is a good unit. He can hit very hard. So overall, um, in terms of his viability, I recommend going for him. I do recommend at least going for the Super Saiyan version of him, getting him maxed out, max dupe system, max. I mean, getting him a max dupe system isn't going to be too difficult, especially because they give us all the dupes, so you don't actually have to grind him out. I would, however, still recommend possibly going for a second base form of him because they do both run together on a team they hit off four link skills i went over that in yesterday's video and they can be good against any of the um, events that require you to a have low team cost and b have um, only use free to play cards like the technique goku event uh, lr goku event or tech or the strength uh, lr freeze event he, he actually runs good on everything except for the physical version of the LR Goku event, but even at that point, you don't need to worry too much about it. But he's really good against the technique one when you're trying to grind out um, the uh, uh, the medals to get him Doken Awakened. Anyway, without going too far into it, um, this is um, going to be how you run. You're going to have the small that drops anywhere between 60 to 100 orbs. Uh, we have the medium from anywhere between 30 to 59 orbs, and you have the large from 3 to 4. That's what the boss drops. Now, according to some sources, uh, apparently the small and the large are the more common drops. I haven't verified this myself, um, but it's a 33% chance to have any of these three drop. So that's like 0.33. So keep that in mind when you're running. Uh, go down the medium path um, and, you know, just keep on watching what the boss drops. If you notice him dropping, like, a lot more large and medium orbs, go down the small path more often. If you see him dropping a lot more small and large, go down the medium path and so on. So just remember to, you know, pay attention to what you're doing in the game if you're really trying to optimize how quick that this can be done. Um, if you're trying to go for more, then, you know, go, you know, for for both uh, the base and the dupe, then, you know, it probably really doesn't matter to you. <laughs> but I uh, just want to keep that in mind. Um, in terms of the Nimbus Cloud, when you go on the Nimbus Cloud, you have an option, well, not option, you're going to want to prioritize which ones you're going to really go for. So essentially, you're going to want to make sure that you have a couple singles when you're going towards the Nimbus Cloud, if you see it. So uh, in my opinion, obviously, uh, optimize which uh, paths that you go down if you're going for medium orbs try and get all the or the medium orbs that you can in the original before you fight the boss on um, the first part of the map um, and then after you prioritize that those those pods beat the boss try to keep as many singles single dice that you possibly can when you hit the nimbus cloud that way you can actually go and jump to whatever section you want whether it be you know small medium or large orbs that way you prioritize getting them 
Now, in terms of how long it's going to take, now, I did some basic math over here. Now, this math is definitely not perfect. I'm going to call out why it's not perfect. Um, so, you know, any mathematicians out there, if you actually created a, a mathematical formula for this, uh, you know, let me know or, you know, post it up on Reddit or whatever, um, you know, just because this is definitely not perfect, but this is what I did. X equals number of runs, and it's multiplied by uh, this equation over here, which is, first, is percentage chance, I'm oh, sorry, that's supposed to be chance, uh, drop from the boss times the average dropped orbs. So, like, the chance is 33%, uh, so it's 0.33 times the average dropped orbs plus half the max nimbus route um so uh so essentially what i'm saying there is on the nimbus route right you have the option to get three times 130 uh, 130 of the small so i did 1.5 times 130 so that's half of what that would be uh times the chance of the nimbus appearance which is 0.2 percent or 20 percent uh, times the assumed average of three pods on the field. So at the beginning of the field, I'm assuming you're only going to hit three pods. Now, I'm trying to be very conservative here to give you like the wor almost one of the worst case average scenarios that you could possibly get. Not the average, like one of the worst case averages. Chances are you're going to hit more than three pods. Um, times the lowest number of orbs that are, that are available. So if you have only like 22 orbs for small, uh, is the smallest one that I have seen so far. So I did it times 22. Now, one thing that this second part of the equation did not take into consideration is when you go down the Nimbus route, it doesn't take into consideration that you're going to be hitting off the other uh, pods. So, for instance, 195 is 1.5 times the um, small orbs because, you know, it's, uh, it's what was it again? Um, 130, so 130 times 1.5 equals 195. So, it doesn't take into consideration that there are still large and medium orbs that you're going to get from going this route. You can hit everyone when you're doing this. I'm just talking about small in general. So overall, small with this equation comes down to 51 runs to get all the possible small orbs that you need. Medium is going to be 22 runs and large is going to be about 56 runs. So to me, that means that you're going to be doing this, uh, I would assume, I would estimate probably about 70 runs total in order to get everything. Now, I did see that some people only ran this about four or five stamina bars, and assuming you have a stamina bar of like 156, that's a 16, I think it's 16 stamina costs, and I'll log into the game right now, actually, I'm already in the game. So, when I'm looking at this right now, I'm pretty sure it's a 60, yeah, 16 stamina, and let's just assume, like, I have 160 stamina available in game, so let's bring this up. So, 160 divided by 16 equals 10 run, and four stamina bars, so that's 10 runs times four is 40, so 40 runs it took them. So you could definitely get this in, in less runs, obviously, because this is going to be worst case scenario. So I'm not saying it's going to take a long, long time. You can get this in 40 runs if you're very lucky, or you can get this in 70 runs if you're very unlucky. But my estimate would be, be between between 40. To, I would say just to go a little bit further and make it worse is 80 runs. So between 40 to 80 runs, but you're probably going to get this done in about 50 to 60 runs, most likely. But that's just based off of my math. Again, the middle part of the equation doesn't take into consideration you getting the additional uh, medium and large orbs on the small uh, and so on. Like medium will not take into consideration the small orbs that can possibly drop and the large doesn't take into consideration the medium or small. But anyway, that's just my calculations right there. So again, if you created a more in-depth analysis, go right ahead. But again, assumptions can be between 40 to 60. Now, um, in terms of crit versus... Uh, uh, double attack versus dodge rate. Now, everyone already knows that if you are debating between crit and double attack, um, typically the community, uh, you know, the, the community go to is crits are guaranteed when it procs. Uh, double attacks are not guaranteed to be super attacks. And dodge is only good on units that are meant to, or not only good, but is typically only used on when a, a opponent or when the uh, card itself actually has a basic dodge freebie or when they're supposed to be a defender if they're a defensive unit because you might as well you know dodge instead of taking any damage if you're going to be defender because you're not a hard hitter now overall goku jr he's a really decent card he's not meant to be the hardest hitter but when he doken awakens he, he can not saying he does he can do attack plus 100 i mean plus 80 percent with supreme damage so he can hit hard and as i stated before he can hit, like, his base uh, attack um, can be up to four, this is not him, is this him? Yeah, uh, 596,000 damage, so that's almost 600, let's say 600,000 damage on average. So 600,000 damage on, obviously, a 120 team. He's not a bad hitter at all. Now, personally, me, I'm going full crit. 
And the only reason I'm doing full crit is because I'll probably take him up against the either the um, the full the LR Frieza events, or I probably won't ever use him outside of that. Because the, the Goku event is already done for me, and I use a tech team. And I brought the tech team on the LR Frieza event, and I destroy him with that. Because the tech team, you have to be honest, let's be honest here. You have the LR Goku, and if you guys 100% in him like I did, uh, SA20 and everything. And then you have the Balma, which I did 100% as well. Between the two of them, those two just destroy the event. And then I always take 100% LR Goku friend. And honestly, it's just boom, boom, boom right through the event. Oh, this guy will not do good um, because in terms of uh, a mono intelligence team, just because you don't have many intelligence units that hit that hard. If you're new here, though, and you don't have that 100% LR Goku and you only have that Bulma, this guy might come in a little bit more handy for you going up against the LR Goku for the stage three grinding the event because it's an intelligence team. Um, regardless, he can come in handy in the future. His team cost is only 32. It's a little bit higher for the 100 cost strike events. Um, I'm not sure if that's ever going to come back. I'm not, I, I didn't read into that news, actually. I should go ahead and do that. I know it was removed for the two-year anniversary. I'm pretty sure it got um, added back. But I haven't looked at those strike events. So let me know down in the comments below. But anyway, um, so an 80% attack buff when that uh, passive skill uh, hits off, he's going to be doing a lot more damage. I personally recommend going for it. I recommend doing crits. Uh, some of you may do half crit, half additional attack, go right ahead. Because the thing is, when you do an additional attack with a crit, it gives him more of a chance to get that crit off, because he can do two attacks, he can do a crit on each of those attacks. I mean, hell, in best case scenario in that situation, he can do a double super attack with a double crit. You know, again, with the average that was calculated, I couldn't find the original calculations, but there's a lot of different calculations for different cards in terms of how much damage output average is done between crits, um, additional attacks, and whether those additional attacks are supers. Crit always does more damage overall throughout the long term. Again, that's why I do it. Also, because you're probably going to want him to crit on a, um, on a bosses that he does not have the type advantage against. But anyway, that's just my recommendation on it, guys. I would recommend doing the crit, but do what you want. It's your choice if you want if you prefer dodge. I just re I wouldn't recommend doing dodge on him anyway because I mean you can get him to 20 uh, dodge I believe if you want to, but he's he's a decent hitter so I wouldn't know why you would want to do that. But anyway, guys, thank you for joining me here today. I hope that was a little bit informative. Um, again, let me know about my math skills over here. I know I haven't been in school in about five years now, so um, but I'm pretty sure that I'm. I'm been decent in telling you that you're probably going to end up taking around, I would say, an average of 50 runs, uh, anywhere between 40 to 60 on average, and then uh, worst case scenario would be over 70, it would be 70 or more. But that's worst case scenario, assuming you have all the worst luck in the world. But thank you for joining me here today. Consider hitting that subscribe button if you're new, and I'll catch you all later.